Phillips met in Coleman Coliseum. It's a good matchup between these two teams. But Alabama tried to get their mojo back as Herb Jones has increased his percentages across the board in terms of points, shot selection. Also trying to knock home that three-point shot. One of the things in his game that just hadn't been there in his career, but he hopes that he can improve on some of those numbers under Nate Oates in his final go with the Crimson Tide. Alabama, of course, coming off that tough loss to Clemson in their last outing in Atlanta. Trying to get some of that, uh, that energy, some of that effort back and knock down some threes. They really struggled behind the arc. And this Furman team, speaking of threes, they could shoot it with the best of them. The first shot, though, goes into the paint. They're up 2 to nothing. As you take a look at our Alabama starting lineups, brought to you by our friends at Farm Ridge. Same usual group, Shaka for Quinterly, Petty Jr. Jones, and Jordan Bruner. Bruner, the Yale grad transfer out of Columbia, South Carolina. Well, the last game that we saw in Tennessee versus App State, uh, we saw a lot of teams, uh, both teams working the shot clock, very defensive oriented. Uh, this is not typical of both of these teams getting to the shot clock. These two teams like to get up and down. That's a very good defensive trip for the first time for Furman. I can't remember the last time in Nate's hood I heard a shot clock buzzer sound <laughs> in a possession. <laughs> As you look at the Farm Ridge starting lineups for Furman, Bothwell, Hunter, Slauson, Gurley, and Mounts. Clay Mounts, 6-7 forward, averaging almost 16 a game as Alabama ties it up at two. interesting matchup these two teams both love to shoot the three they want the easy hoop at the basket right like everybody does but they go about it in a different way as that one is knocked home and already a 5-2 lead for the Paladins well Gurley has gotten off to a tremendous start the 6'8 210 junior out of Fayetteville Georgia you're right these two teams both like to go up and down and shoot the three-pointer extremely fast. Furman over 63s in their past two games combined attempted. Nice layup as that one goes down for Mounts, his first basket of the game. Gurley starts the day for Furman with five straight. And it's a 7-2 Paladin lead. Here's Herbert Jones underneath. He's fouled but can't convert, but he'll head to the free throw line. Bob Ritchie now in his fourth year coaching the Paladins. If to say he's had success would uh, be an understatement. Four, 20, four straight 20 win seasons, back to back 25 win seasons, already 10th in win percentage among active Division I coaches. A career mark of 78 and 27. That's a 737 win percentage. Yeah, he did an outstanding job uh, and really changed the program around. People forget uh, that the RPI for Furman back in 2013 was in the 300s and I think that he really set a precedence in doing things differently trying to organically grow his guys to make sure that he got his teams old and kept his teams old and as a result as you mentioned over 50 plus games uh, won in the past two years Dave I don't care what league you're playing in that's an impressive number to say the least and Herman expected how many to win the Southern Conference this year them and UNC Greensboro pretty much in everybody's top two. Here's Bothwell. It's into the lane right on that SEC logo and Bothwell goes with the left hand. Team's well, leading score at almost 18 a game. Yeah, Dave, he likes to try to post up. I saw him do that quite a bit in the Cincinnati game where they played Cincinnati on the road to single digits. They were in that game pretty much the entire second half. Uh, this is a team that you can tell they are fearless, and we see that very early. And Shackelford drives it into the lane. There is Nate Oates. Nate now in his second year at Alabama. A couple of games over 500. Had some unreal success at Buffalo himself. And he is recruiting like a madman for Alabama basketball right now. Cap will go down. For the Crimson Tide. Let's see who gets credit for that one. Looks like they're going to give it to Bruner underneath, and now Alabama back the other way. There's a takeaway by Alex Hunter. And an easy jam for Clay Mounts. 
Yeah, nice finish, 6'7", 210 pounds. And right now, Furman has come in and thrown the first punch of 13 to 6 in Coleman Coliseum. Coach Oates told us earlier that his team had been actually defending better ahead of schedule, and they have, but they haven't done it consistently. Didn't defend as well as I thought they should have in the Stanford game, but did an outstanding job against Providence and UNLV. They'll need to defend equally as good here tonight. Primo checks in, knocks that one home. Big basket out of the timeout for the Crimson Tide. Josh Primo, obviously five-star prospect, 19th overall, uh, comes in with high expectations and comes up with a huge three-point shot early. Woo! Furman answers right back behind Noah Gurley, who has knocked down his ninth three of the year. Foul against the Paladins away from the basket. But Furman off to a great start. Fish playing like uh, we expected. This is a veteran club with some veteran moves. Yeah, Clay mounts direct drive to the rim, showing you some Southern college. You've had an unprecedented time with the pandemic, changing of schedules. They know what their coach expects from them, and their coach knows what he can expect from them as well. And so right now, this team is playing at a higher level than a lot of younger teams across the country, and I like the pick for them to win the Southern Conference. Oswell Gurley, two outstanding backcourt players. Here comes Howard's back the other way, and Clay mounts, fires off the back of the rim. Long rebound to Garrett Heen. Dave, this is where the sense of urgency has to be there. Both teams are going to shoot three-point shots, so it's not as much about boxing out. You still got to hit your guy defensively, but it's about going and getting the basketball on some of those long misses. I know we talked about that. You know, you can practice all that rebounding all, all day long, but with these three-point rebounds, that ball bounces 20, 25 feet away from the rim. Yeah, it's a go get him type situation. Well, and you got to have all five guys that are going to rebound for you as well. One of the reasons why Furman uh, lost the game at Cincinnati was because they got out-rebounded. Uh, Cincinnati just had too much size on the interior, but it's going to be crucial for Alabama to pull back in this basketball game to not only defend, but to finish the defensive possession with the defensive rebound. Alabama attempted 957 three-pointers last year, which was fourth in the nation. They led the SEC by a large margin. Furman shoots it so well, but you know, the number that people don't talk about with this Furman team, they shot 57% inside the arc. Their two-point field goal percentage last year was second in Division I basketball. Yeah, outstanding, and one of the reasons why they've had the success. You see how they're coming up to a huddle, and you see so many teams do that, but they're a unit, right? I heard somebody who was uh, doing a Kentucky game before, and they said, uh, I think it was Rafferty, he said, they're not a team yet. Right? This Furman team, they're a group. They're five fingers, one fist, and they are connected. See if Alabama can get connected on this possession. Literally, bounce pass in the corner. Here goes Reese, and he knocks it home, and that could be a good sign for Alabama. The big man's really been struggling behind the arc. 4 of 21, coming in 19%. Yeah, he's got such an upside, Dave, and... You look at him at 6'9", he's mobile. You just wonder when he's going to turn it on for Alabama. And then Furman comes right back down the court, and they knock home the three-pointer by Pugh. Early leads Furman with nine. Here's a rebound into the hands of Alex Hunter. He Battling underneath. Loose ball won by Alabama. Deep three. You knew that shot was coming up from Petty. He had been quiet. 
Well, and John Petty's a good three-point shooter. That's just not good shot selection. And that's what Coach Nate Oates talked to us about. He said that they're a better shooting team that they've displayed year to date, but they've got to get better at picking and choosing when to take good shots. That rebound into the hands of Alabama. Back the other way goes Primo. And this young man is showing you some of the skill set that got him on everybody's radar. The five-star will head to the free throw line. Well, Dave, that's the difference when you play a team like Alabama. Oftentimes, we talk about defensive pressure. Alabama is a team, and you saw that uh, uh, quite a bit in the Providence win, where you have offensive pressure. Look how quickly this is. You've got Furman players that are trying to point and figure out where they're going, and Primo's already back with the and one into the basket. So oftentimes, we talk about the tenacity defensively. Alabama's a team that's tenacious on the offensive end, and particularly in transition. Primo had his season-best 15 points against Providence, where he knocked home three of six from behind the arc. A couple of double-figure scoring games. Doesn't confer there, but Furman still leads this by six. Othwell can't get the basket. Here's Primo the other way. Shackleford off to Primo. Rebound to the Paladins. How about that hustle by Alex Reese? That's what Knocking I'm talking about. Chairs. Well, if you want to win the basketball game right now, those are the type of plays that you have to make, right? And, and, and this is what I think Alabama fans are expecting more from from Alex Reese. He's a guy who has such an incredible upside, but he seems to turn it on and off sometime. You can't do that. You've got to be consistent and have a blue-collar mindset anytime you're in between the lines. Herman shooting 67% from the field to start this game. That'll be a traveling violation against the Paladins. So what you've noticed, Dave, is Alabama's turned up the pressure substantially right since that initial timeout to where they're getting some stops. I expect Furman, who likes to run a lot of cuts, back cuts, I expect them to try to back cut and see if they can catch Alabama sleeping at the wheel. Over Jones. Spins, fires, won't go. Rebound to the Paladins underneath. Jalen Slauson. to Bothwell. He takes it inside, gets a layup to go. Bothwell off to a good start. Furman is terrific at finding mismatches. They try to move the basketball, and if you have a weak link, a guy who they think that doesn't have the foot speed to keep up with their guards, they'll expose it. Their turnover for Alabama results in a basket at the other end, and Furman has stretched this out to 10. Beautiful job by Marcus Foster running the floor of the 6'4", 210-pound native out of Atlanta, Georgia. Largest lead of the game for the Paladins. Long rebound. Wide open corner three from Keon Ellis won't go. Here comes Bothwell, defended by Shackelford. Bothwell, Woo! catch and shoot, knocks it home. Sizzling hot. You have to find out where he is. He's already had a season high of 26 points, career high of 27 points, and Furman relentless on the defensive end. It is a 15-point game. Anderson gets his first basket. The 9-0 Paladin run. That three is no good. And a foul underneath. That's going to go against the Paladins as Reese was trying to 
pick up that rebound. But Furman off to a great start on the road, shooting 75% fish. Yeah, Dave, it reminds me in the Rocky movie when he said the man strong. The Furman Paladins have came to play, and right now another beautiful finish by Anderson at the rim. But you also, if you coach Nate Oaks, you, you're, you're thinking about what I can do to possibly change some things up. Uh, I don't know if you want to play this team zone because they're already doing so well shooting the basketball from the perimeter. I think you're right. I think Alabama's proven they can defend. They just got to dig down and guard. A nice set out of the timeout by Coach Nate Oaks. Well, Gary checks in the game and gets the easy lay-in after that exceptional inbounds play. But Furman still up 13. It's Lawson. Rebound right into the hands of Jawan Gary. Gary's only Let's averaged see. about three minutes per game. Let's see if Alabama can put some multiple stops together. That's one stop. Petty gets that rebound. That will be an offensive foul against Jordan Bruner. Spot on. That's the correct call. And I understand Bruner was trying to be physical with the basketball. But when you don't have anything there, you can't just dig your shoulder down. You just got to try to go straight up. I think it was the right call. A couple of points, two rebounds tonight. He's picked up his first foul. Dave, you see all the movements. It's cohesive offense. You're getting screens from different angles. And so you have to be connected defensively. And I'm trying to watch to see how much communication there. You mentioned it before. We've talked about it. This is a veteran group. They've been running this in the offseason. Whereas for Alabama, and Coach Oates talked about it, he said he didn't want to even talk about pandemic issue and how far it put them behind in, in certain situations. And so that's what they're dealing with right now. They've got to grow up extremely quickly and be connected defensively. Quinterly picked up that foul, by the way, his first. Solid job that time. Anderson with the air ball. Outstanding job of Furman getting back in defensive transition, though. This is a quality team. Petty off the mark. Alabama. Two of nine from behind the arc. 32% overall. Alex Hunter has that one knocked out of his hands by Keon Ellis, the 6'6 junior. They used his Florida. You know, Dave, you asked Coach Richie earlier, he said, are you all pretty similar to the styles you play? And I thought his response was really good. He said, we're very similar in the fact that we like to get up and down. He said he didn't like scores in the 50s and 60s. He likes to be in the 80s. But he said the difference is Alabama tries to score in the half court off of direct drives and penetration versus they use more cuts. We haven't seen a lot of penetration by Alabama because of the job that Firm has done. And you see the points in the paint, 16 to 8, displays how good Firm has done in stopping the basketball. Nate Oates says we need. This has been his philosophy since we started talking to him. Every game we, we did last year, we need two pointers at the rim. We need free throws and we need kick out threes. I haven't seen really much of any of those three things tonight. No, we haven't because they've been unable to put Furman into rotation because Furman is keeping Alabama in front of them. Corner three from Mouse. Oh. Play basketball. Nine points. Furman has doubled up the Crimson Tide here in the first half. A little over eight minutes to go. That one is knocked away. Out of bounds. Last touch by Furman. Here at Heen. Flex it out of bounds. 
Coach Oates is looking. He's trying to find something right now. We've seen so many players in and out of the basketball game. You realize it's a late game. You know, you realize you don't have the same fans. He's looking for some guys to bring energy. We know the success that he had at Buffalo, but he didn't do that not trying to get his players motivated. Big shot. Eight, three. Shackleford buries that one, a 36% shooter from behind the arc, his 10th of the season. See if that doesn't spark Alabama. It'll be Alabama's basketball when we come back. But first half has belonged to the men wearing the black jerseys. The Paladins up 32 19. They are uh, 5 out of 12 from behind the arc. Alabama struggling again. They're 3 out of 11 shooting the three ball. And it's been kind of, for the most part, a one and done for the Crimson Tide. Only two points. Two second chance points tonight. And we've got 7.25 to go here in the first half. This is what Coach Nato's talked about. He talked about the ball sticking too much. You want the ball to pop. It should move quickly so it moves the defense. A three is short, but there's Herbert Jones with the offensive rebound and a second chance opportunity for the Crimson Tide to cut this to 11. Yeah, he's the engine that makes this Crimson Tide vehicle run, whether it's setting the screen, making the pass. I watched the Providence game, and it seemed like four or five plays in a row, he was part of the success that they were having on both ends of the floor, whether it was a block shot, a rebound, a pass, an assist, or still, he's extremely important for the time. Long rebound. It'll belong to Alabama. Herb Jones... Coming off the 17-point game against Clemson in that loss, but his big story was the fact that he graduated on Saturday. Congratulations to Herbert Jones, and I love the fact that he matched the car. That is such a, that is such a Damian Fishback move right there. Yeah, he deserves his congratulations to him and his family. Got to get that degree. Reese has one three here in the first half. Can't get that one to go. Dave, let's remember with two teams like this that get up and down and play with this type of pace, it's going to be a game of runs in either direction. The key is this end for both teams. Who is, who's going to be able to put together multiple stops to go on runs? Noah Gurley couldn't stop him as he drives to the basket. Herman's led by as many as 16. Right now it stands at 13. The Mounts and Gurley have been the... The show offensively as they put up 20 and Alex Reese knocks home his second three of the first half. Yeah, both of those guys really going head to head. Gurley and Alex Reese, kind of a game inside the game right now. Free throws coming up for the Paladins. Well, here you see Noah Gurley using his foot speed. Look how quickly he explodes to the rim, and that's against a guard. And then Alex Reese, we know he's a pick-and-pop guy. The recovery is too slow, and Alex Reese, nothing but nylon. We know he can shoot the basketball. Reese, two out of four from behind the arc. Here's our final Saturday of college football lineup for you. Coming up as uh, the regular season comes to a close. And on the SEC Network, you'll be able to see LSU and Ole Miss as they'll finish up their season at Tiger Stadium, 3.30 Eastern time. Now, the SEC Network alternate channel will have Missouri and Mississippi State. And to find the SEC Network alternate channel in your area, go to secnetwork.com. That's all coming up Saturday right here on the SEC Network. And, of course, it's always on the ESPN app. Look at this defense here, Dave. You, you know, even it, it seems like what you said earlier. Furman seems to be the attacker, right? And, and uh, Coach Richie talked about the fact that it was hard for him to get scheduling, right? Uh, especially with all the cancellations. He figured after they were supposed to be in the tournament in Orlando, he said, you know, I figured there'd be a lot of teams open looking for scheduling. Well, teams haven't wanting to schedule Furman because of the veterans that they have coming back. 
Uh, and you can see why now with this early run they've had here on the road in, in Coleman Coliseum. Reese tries again. Won't go. Petty tried to tap it. It'll belong to Alabama. 20 seconds on the shot clock. 5.01 on the game clock. And boy, John Petty got to get him going. Just two points. He's one of four from the field. Nice tough drive. Herbert Jones. Hunter swinging around the perimeter now. Hothwell gives it up inside, and that'll be another basket for Gurley. A solid defense on that trip, just better offense. Excuse me, give that basket to Marcus Foster. And Foster just used those 210 pounds to really bulldoze his way into the paint area. Good luck. Kick out three, and that one goes down for Herbert Jones. His fourth three of the year. He's now four out of nine. You know, Dave, in the SEC, there were 12 picks, six in the first round last year in the NBA draft. I find it hard to believe if Herbert Jones can stay healthy at 6'7 with his versatility that he doesn't find a spot at the next level. Knocked out of bounds by Jones, one of the best defensive players in the entire country. Yeah, this time Herb Jones isn't setting the screen. Trigger locked and ready, and nothing but string music. To find three better than these three when they are playing to their capable their capabilities. Now, John Petty Jr. is is, is critical. I mean, he's a veteran. He's come back. Uh, he's one of the few guys that have scored and had the same experience in this league outside of Javante Smart. Uh, he's got to step up for Alabama to have success this year. Shot Beautiful. clock beating a three-pointer again from Furman. Their offense has been spectacular here in the first half. Bothwell has posted double figures now in the first half. He's got 10. Gurley leads him with 13. That's and pretty. Alabama answers right back to cut it to nine. Well, you've got five guys at, at all times who can shoot the three-point shot for Alabama, which is what makes them lethal offensively. But you can't outscore every opponent, and that's the job that Furman is doing there. Matt Ferry's another one. Nate Oates not happy about it. Timeout, 2.56 to go before halftime. Just as Bruner answers the call on the one side, Furman comes back and knocks home a three. Well, I am extremely impressed with the patience in their league for the reasons we're watching here tonight. Such a balanced team. You, you, uh, UNC Greensboro hanging in there at number two. ETSU, East, East Tennessee State trying to keep the mojo going, even though their coach, Steve Forbes, now at Wake Forest. He had a great run at ETSU. Well, nowhere to go. Finally finds Mount who rips the net. That was a perfect example of experience and veteran leadership. Furman had the push like they always had, but when it wasn't there, they were patient. They maintained their poise. Mounts. They're going to call offensive foul against the senior out of Elkin, North Carolina. Well, there's an offensive foul, a nice job defensively on the previous trip, but that's the poise I'm talking about by Bothwell. And then you see Clay Mount, 6'7", 210 pounds, scored 21 points in Saturday over Flagler uh, to surpass 1,000 points. 
Uh, and Furman has a lot of weapons. Now, Alabama does too. Alabama's got as many weapons as anyone in the SEC. But Furman has matched them offensively and has really stepped into the plate defensively in this first half. Three Paladins and double figures here in the first half. Alabama's been led by Jones with his nine. Here is Herbert. Spins in the lane, and that won't drop. Tapped around by Herbert. Finally goes down. Good work by Alabama to crash the offensive glass. They now have 10 second-chance points. Well, they got their offensive rebounds up for sure on that particular possession. Offwell can't get it to go. A rebound into the hands of Gary. Petty to Jones. Beautiful. Underneath. And a foul as Gary went up strong, and he'll head to the free throw line with under a minute to go. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, we'll send you back to Dari and Roman. We'll have some of the first half stats and highlights. They'll talk some college football playoff, I'm sure, in the process, and so much more. All coming up at halftime. Alabama still shooting 38%. The problem is on the defensive side, they allowed Furman to shoot 67%. Furman's hit 8 of 16 from behind the arc. And Gary can't get the second to drop. And the rebound to the Paladins. This is what Alabama has to realize. And Furman has shown that they do realize this. Your defense affects your offense. If Furman continues to score baskets, then they'll be able to have their defense set up. Now Alabama has numbers. Let's see if they get something in the break. Looks like they're going to wait and see if they can be patient to get a, some momentum going into the half. Herbal Jones. Nice pass. Nice. Gary with the finish. You know, Dave, They've got the offense figured out. I'm anxious to see if Dari Noka asks Roman, the big-time safety, what they need to do defensively. <laughs> They've got to figure something out, that's for sure. Five seconds. High arching three. That'll be off the mark. So Furman, led by as many as 16 here in the first half. They'll take a 10-point lead into the break. Furman at 5-1, and one, Alabama at 3-2. and two. And the Paladins shoot the lights out, 62%. Time to get you to the studio. Dari, Roman. It's eight threes in that first half. Their season high was 16 threes. They knocked down 16 of 34 against College of Charleston when they put up 89 points. Alabama needs to get some help from their starters. And there is a clock malfunction. The clock did not start. So I thought we'd just go back and do it all over again. Tony Green, Jerry Pollard, Brent Hampton, our officiating crew. There is Tony Green, our lead official, our referee tonight. Dave, is it just me, or does Tony Green look the exact same as when I play? Because you look the exact same as when I play. So well, then absolutely, the answer to that question would be <laughs> yes, then. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the blueberry pancakes you That's it, this buddy. That's it. Man, don't forget those sausage patties. Uh, we eat healthy in this Neal household, buddy. You should come over one morning about 6.30. We'll get you We'll get you taken care of. There's Tony Green at us. Makes his home in Stone Mountain, Georgia. He's been doing this a long time. A lot of Final Fours for Tony. Not much can get past Tony, that's for sure. As a matter of fact, he might start running the clock over there. <laughs> Well, this gives us an opportunity for players and coaches and everything else you need to know as you can always watch it on the ESPN app if you're out and about. Nobody covers the SEC like we do. I hope not since we got SEC in the network, right? In the title of the network. That would be good if somebody beat us to the punch. 
<laughs> nice dump down pass and Jordan Bruner with the easy layup. He now has seven and Alabama's cut up to single digits. Yeah, so much offense ran through Herbert Jones. Tremendous pass and looks like Alabama's trying to step it up on the defensive end right now. So Mounts cuts to the basket. He is fouled. And so Mounts will head to the free throw line where he is not a very good free throw shooter. Or excuse me, he is a good free throw shooter at 13 out of 15. He's averaging just under 16 points a game. Preseason all Southern Conference choice. Actually, that will make it an inbounds. He's shooting a three, right? Well, you didn't see either team shoot many free throws in the first half. That's where analytics come in. They want layups or three-point shots. So even though it gives you better percentages from the three-point line, if you're making them, then you don't get to the free throw line as much as you see Slauson with a nice finish on the interior. So how about this Furman team shooting 85% inside the arc in this game? That one's short on that three. So, this is how you shoot 85%. They're inside well, the arc. Well, that, on that particular play, you, you can look at 13 and White. Quinterly was still trying to figure it out, the Villanova transfer. You know, he, he couldn't quite figure out who he was guarding defensively, and the movement was just too quick. Alabama needs more communication defensively. They need to be talking to one another. Catch and shoot for Hunter. That's off the mark. Here's Petty. How about Petty's first half? Two points, one of five, 0 for three from behind the arc. That three won't go, but there's Herbert Jones. Second chance opportunity. And Herbert Jones sets up his teammate beautifully with the offensive rebound. And Alabama needs more of that as Quinterly knocks home that three, his first of the game. Matter of fact, for Quinterly, his first basket. Sure. Well, and as we mentioned in the first half, this game can change rather quickly, uh, but not with Bothwell getting looks like that from the perimeter. Tremendous job of moving the basketball. Nice pass by Mounts to the three-point shot. So Herbert Jones now with a dozen points, six rebounds, and a couple of assists. Prime example. That time Shackleford looked like a sophomore. He was too concerned about his own man. There was no communication between he and John Petty, which is what allowed the easy layup at point blank range. Shackleford high off the window. He is fouled. See, Dave, this is what I'm talking about. You see Shackleford that time? He's got a switch there. He and Petty should be communicating. You got to see ball and man. But it was a nice job on the back screen of Mounts exploding to the basket. And that's where Alabama has to continue to get better. And probably the reason why Shackleford takes a little breathing. What a big foul if you're Alabama because Mounts just picked up his fourth. And he'll now head to the bench with those 14 points, 6 of 8 from the field. And a couple of three-pointers. So that could be big news here with 7.22 to go in the game. Patty trying to get it going. Just not his night to this point. But here's an opportunity underneath. Kept alive by Rojas. And the layup is good from Keon Ellis as he slashes through the lane. Yeah, nice athletic, aggressive move. He had five minutes against Clemson, but you can tell the young man wants to contribute tonight. There's a takeaway by Rojas at 6'8", leading the charge, and not a great pass. Last touch there by Josh Primo. And right now, they look at the drive by Ellis. I love the pass fake in order to get to the rim. It's so underrated in the game of basketball. Pass fakes, shot fakes. It often makes the defense move, and you don't see a lot of players do that as much anymore because, quite frankly, they're used to watching James Harden pound it on the floor for about an hour and make plays. Not everyone's going to be James Harden. Uh, 
Jones. Well defended by Herb Jones. Jones does what he does, and that is stop offensive players from getting in their comfort zone. Shot clock. Down to one. Shot off at the horn. Rebound right into the hands of Rojas. Nice pass. Boy, Petty can't buy a basket. And then the turnover. Here comes Hunter the other way. Foul as Gurley goes up strong. Kyle Lindsay will head to the free throw line. When we come back, time for our nightly fish facts. Stay with us. You don't want to miss this one. And um, obviously he may have said something that maybe you want to keep to yourself, right? I mean, there was some backlash, but he, uh, you know, he explained his thoughts behind that, and it's hard to argue with, with his perspective. Sure. Well, uh, everybody knows Coach K is one of the best to ever do it, a Hall of Fame coach. And so when he says something, then not many people are willing to go against him. But that's what I like about Coach Nate Oates. Coach Nate Oates is a fighter. Uh, he's a guy who coaches his team, who stays in his lane. And I think he was just making the point that there's no place better that these young men and women can be uh, protected around people where they're getting tested, uh, having mental health where they're around their teammates. And I think if you see a nice finish or Herbert Jones try to finish, I think if Coach K had said that in reference to his team, then it wouldn't have been as much backlash, if you will, from other people in college basketball. Othwell can't get that to go. He brought up a great point. He says, these guys play basketball. It's what they do, right? I mean, they play every day of their lives if they could. That's how much they love the game or they wouldn't be here. That three-pointer off the mark from Rojas. So if they were at home, you send them home, what would they be doing? They'd be playing some random sure. pickup games on some courts that probably are not the safest places to be. Um, but here, you get them in an environment, and you get to, to kind of manage them the best you can, right? You give them their best shot to not get the virus. Well, um, and, and, and Dave, we had coaches that talked to us and said they asked the parents what they would want them to do. And the parents said, no, we want our kids right there. We know that they're having being taken care of there. As you see, a nice alley-oop and finish at the rim. And so that's the difference. Uh, a nice shot behind on the completion there at that time. And Herbert Jones, who's bringing the energy for Alabama, Back the other way, working hard, fouled on the way to the basket, but Garrett Heen giving him some nice minutes off the bench. The freshman out of Charlotte, North Carolina, as Furman has pushed this back to double figures. Well, you know, just to put a point, uh, a button on that conversation, I think that there are, you know, obviously a lot of opinions about this, and um, everybody's got one, right? I mean, anybody that's been around the game or have kids and... Some kids are in school, some aren't. I mean, it's a never-ending discussion on what the right thing is to do. I don't think anybody really knows what the right thing is to do. So we all have an opinion, and um, you can disagree with it or agree with it. There. And that's all you have to say about that's that. That's it. I'm done. I'm going to put the mic down. I'm out of here. <laughs> you dropped the mic on him, <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Alabama, I think, has had a different mentality since they've come out here yes. in the second half. It's, it's, it's not quite as easy for Furman as it was in the first half. So let's see if Furman can try to pick it up to get some of that same mojo they had when they started the basketball game. Offwell, boy, they are really in his chest defensively here in the second half. Shot clock wow. violation. Now, that's I'm what I see call that defense. Well, listen, they defended for 30 seconds. I remember when we played, uh, we would have to defend and practice for 30 seconds, whether it was a shell drill, and the shell drill just meaning uh, you're really not trying to score uh, as much, uh, and, and you just got five guys that are shadowing uh, the five guys on the offensive end. And we would do that numerous amount of times just to build up our endurance to be able to guard for 30 seconds and that's what Alabama just did on that previous trip can they turn it into points on the other side though down 11 14 05 to go and a bump foul out on the elbow that will go against Jalen Slauson the 6'7 junior out of Somerville South Carolina you might remember that last name cousin RJ Slauson played in South Carolina Third, 
His dad also played some hoops. Played Father Tom played hoops at the Citadel. An athletic family. And you think about uh, people who have that athleticism and have parents or brothers who have played. You think about even in the SEC, you've got Scotty Pippen Jr., right? The son of Scotty Pippen at Vanderbilt. You've got Sharif O'Neal, the son of Shaquille O'Neal at LSU. It's always like they got some sort of an edge to them just being exposed to the game their entire life. You know, I hope, hopefully my kids aren't listening, but I, I hate to tell you, tell them, but I hope they're not expecting that same athletic gene passed down in the Neo family. <laughs> <laughs> Their career might end with mine like a church league hoops. Oh, you awesome. bring other talents. Thank you. And skill sets, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that'll send Jawan Gary to the free throw line. Alabama gets to stop the clock. Try to cut into this lead. Gary's had some nice minutes off the bench. Now, he's played four games, averaging just three minutes per game. Scored one point on the season. He has seven here tonight. Well, here's our college basketball doubleheader for next Tuesday. Coming up right here on the SEC Network and, of course, the ESPN app. James Madison will make the trip down to the Swamp to take on the Florida Gators at 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 Central. Then we'll take you over to Baton Rouge where the VCU Rams will take on the LSU Tigers at the Maravich Assembly Center, 9 o'clock Eastern time there. That should be a good one, VCU and LSU. It will be. VCU put up close to 100 points in their last victory uh, two teams that really like to get up and down and obviously when you think of Florida you think about that tremendous news from Keontae Johnson uh, being able to FaceTime his team today and being able to do some things uh, some simple commands that's just the best news that we've heard all year yeah man it was just a, such a scary moment talk to his family talk to his doctors today so Obviously making some positive strides. Wish him nothing but the best in this recovery. And hopefully it'll be a quick one. Here is the statement from the Florida Gators and his parents. As you see, Keontae's in stable condition today. Breathing on his own. Speaking with us and with the doctors here at the UF Health Center. He even FaceTimed his team. And... Uh, it's just great news because such a scary moment. They know they put him in that induced coma, and you just never know how that's going to turn out, right? I mean, um, it's still scary. And just hope that he's going to get back to where he was, playing some great basketball, and obviously preseason player of the year in this league. And off the inbounds pass, Jawan Gary slams it home. So Jawan now with 10 and double figures. Uh, you got to remember, Jawan Gary came off of a knee injury, was had to sit out a little bit last year back in 2019 and 20 uh, but he's strong around the post he gives alabama another big body you have to remember he was 64 uh, ranked by espn as a recruit and yeah, number two player coming out of the state of south carolina where he averaged 21 points a game in high school i think he's earned himself some more minutes after tonight's performance Here is Noah Gurley. Kicks it to Anderson. Now they'll work the perimeter, and that one is stolen away. Shackelford finally corrals it, and he is fouled on the way up, so Alabama gets to go back to the free throw line. Seeing much better connectivity by Alabama here in this second half. Now, on that previous play, Quinterly was trying to help, but he stayed a little bit too long uh, trying to go for a steal. But on the pass, he got help from Shackelford, and there was pretty good rotation. And Shackelford was, was actually fortunate enough to get out and get a steal on that play. That's what happens when you have each individual trying to help the other individual on the defensive end. I think we saw that in, this, in the Tennessee game before. Uh, I said before that I thought that Baylor was the most connected team that I saw defensively. I think you have to put that Tennessee team that we just watched in the game before against App State in that same category. The lead has been cut to six. Furman led by as many as 16 and it was 32 to 16. 
And that man right there has provided the spark, Dewan Gary. Alabama has two players in double figures. Jones with 12, Gary with 10. And I think one of the big storylines developing is the fact that John Petty sits on two points. One of seven from the field, 0 of five from behind the arc. Petty came in averaging almost 14 a game. Preseason All-SEC player. Well, you see Petty's not having his best night, but Alabama is still certainly within striking distance. Uh, it's a two-possession game right now. I think that's something positive. Now, if you're John Petty, you know, you have to look deep down within yourself and say, you know, what can I do to help this team? Even if I'm not making shots, can I defend better? Can I rebound better? And he's more than capable of doing more than just shooting the basketball. Take it back out to Bothwell. A little up and under move. That was pretty good defense, just better offense by Furman on that particular trip. Rojas flying around, but a foul against Rojas. They'll go the other way. I believe it's Rojas. I think they're going to give it to Slauson instead. Looked like Rojas was a little bit out of control, but it'll stay Alabama basketball. Let's take a look. It looks like they may have called the foul before on Mounts. So also still trying to look at the monitor's the video screen. Like, how in the world did I get that? Well, sure. The, the, the contact was with Mounts before, but maybe they said that he, he reached down uh, on the penetration that time. But again, this is something that we didn't see from Alabama in the first half. This is an ability for them to get to the free throw line, to the charity stripe. They need that. The twos and threes have to be, uh, you have to uh, have those along with uh, free throws as well. And that's what Coach Nato's talked to us about. Rojas at Jamestown, New York, a junior college transfer at a Hutchinson Community College. A more look at this foul. Oh, that's a good call. Yeah. It yep. was the reach. Pull, he pulled down the arm afterwards. Fish was right on it. And, you know, with Rojas being a Drew Call America, I think Coach Nate Oates has said, I'm going with my toughest and grittiest guys here in this second half, and it's working. Catch and shoot by Hunter Long. Rebound into the hands of Herbert Jones, who now has eight of those. Rojas swinging around the perimeter. Jones and Shackelford, and he travels with it. Timeout on the floor. Furman leads by six. Yeah, the, there goes that man, Jawan Gary. Nice penetration to the rim. And when you finish like that, Jawan, I'm going to call you Jawan. Go get it, Gary. Good finish. You opened the door with all of that football knowledge, so I'm gonna put you on the stock day there. Who's who's your Heisman Trophy winner year to date? Devontae Smith, right now. I don't think there's any question he is the best player in college football. No Whoa. doubt. I don't I think like there's any that. The confidence. Yeah, man, I'm telling you. I mean that's what the award is, right? It's player in the game. And to me, he is without a doubt at a level that is uh, by himself. And listen, Kyle Trask, Mac Jones had great years. And, but I think Devontae has just been just crazy good. Well, Speaking of crazy good, Furman knocks him another one. Absolutely. And, you know, Coach Oates changes up the lineups, and there's a gamble that time by Alex Reese that leads to a three point shot. This group for Alabama it needs to show that they can defend like the previous group, uh, who I thought did a tremendous job defensively. How about putting Mounts back in? Four fouls at the 11-20 mark. I love it. It shows Coach Richie's personality. He's going for it right now. 
Knocked down one three. Tried to get a second since he returned onto the floor. Here's Petty. He's back on the floor. Something tells me he's not going to go 0 for 5. The three point line. Looks like we got maybe an injured Rojas down there in the quarter, but Petty's the story to me right now and why Alabama is down nine. They got to get more out of him. He's one of seven, 0 for five. He does have five rebounds and four assists, so he's done some other things, but they need some point production from him. Yeah, one of his last 16 three pointers, just two of 17 uh, over his last two plus basketball games. And as a shooter, sometimes you get in the slump. And, and so what you have to do is try to figure out what ways you can get going, whether that's get to the free throw line, try to get fouled, try to get you something at point blank range at the rim. And most importantly, after this game, he needs to get in the gym and get some shots up. It looks like he just banged knees with somebody as he hobbles to that stanchion. Just got back in this game. I'm not coming out. Let's see what happened here. Oh yeah, just rolled it as he stepped on the top of the foot of Jalen Slauson. Nice to see that he's able to walk it off. Herbert Jones takes it to the rim. Tell you what. At 6'7", as agile and mobile as Herbert Jones is, and sometimes he's like a, a varsity guy playing with a bunch of freshmen. He kind of just does whatever he wants to do when he wants to do it. And a hand check out on the perimeter. That'll go against Josh Primo. Hey, what? When you start talking about John Petty and what he's done, the last two seasons were 769 points. That is second among active players in the Southeastern Conference. And he is just an exceptional shooter. When he gets going, he had 10 three-pointers in a game last year. The fact that he has none tonight is somewhat newsworthy. Well, he's a senior, so he, he's a known for opposing teams. And you see another three-point shot that particular time by Bothwell. Uh, when, when you're at the top of that scouting report, it's so hard. But he has to know that a team like Furman that won 25-plus games the last two years, they're going to make you do something besides a three-point shot. And that's where he'll continue to work on it, and he'll get better over time. So Petty's coming back in. Let me ask you this. You, you played this game at a high level. You shot the three. How do you try to get it going? You know, like, what, what does he need to go, you know, take it to the rim, try to get to the free throw line? What do you, what do, you do? Well, there's multiple ways. Number one, uh, in transition is the best way. You've got to get out and sprint to an open space when you're out in transition for a three-point shot. Number two, moving without the basketball. In the half court, you should never stop. You need to change speeds. And particularly when you give up the basketball, try to move after that. And as you said, try to do things, get offensive rebounds, get to the free throw line, and a nice pass that time by Penny with led to another three-point shot by Rojas. Rojas averaging three and a half points coming into this game. He's put up five tonight. Four rebounds. Good defense by Petty on that play. Shackleford off to Petty. Here's Rojas. Petty. Shackleford fouled and he'll have a couple of free throws coming up. Just couldn't convert. Well, the one thing that I noticed when it comes to Shackleford, uh, Jaden Shackleford is a guy who likes to, to to penetrate through the through the defense when the ball is moving. We, we talked about the ball not sticking, and when it rotates, Shackleford is really good at reading the defense and their rotation and trying to jackknife through the center of the defense when they're trying to rotate. He did it on that play, and he's done it quite a bit tonight. Alabama shooting 40%. Furman's numbers have dipped somewhat. 
They were up over 60% from the floor until a few moments ago. They're at 57% right now. You can feel good energy right now inside of the arena by Alabama. If you're firm, and this is where you need to show patience. See if you can get a nice screen or a back cut or a pick and roll to get something wide open going to the rim. Rojas defending Gurley well. Aroha, you can talk energy, he's brought it, no doubt about it. He and Jawan Gary have been huge for Alabama tonight off the bench. Yeah, yeah Rojas, got, he has a little junkyard dog in him. I like him, I like him a lot. I like that grit and toughness that he's showing. And you get that from a lot of Juco guys. They kind of come up the hard knock way. It's a little bit tougher, right? They don't come in ranked as a top pick, so they have to work a little bit harder amongst the Juco ranks. And Rojas has that mindset. And he just picks up that foul. That'll be his first. That is the sixth team foul against Alabama. Next one, free throws coming up for Furman. Alabama's already in the bonus. There's that guy Whoa. again. Clay Mouse. Knocks home the three and has a four-point opportunity on the horizon. What do you think about Coach Richie putting it back in the game now, Dave Neal? The easiest way to get open is to actually set a screen, a nice screen, the screener play, and an outstanding job. Look at that emotion that that man is displaying right now. Tell me he doesn't want to win a basketball game here on the road. Clay Mounts, the six-foot-seven senior. Knocks home the free throw. And the lead is back to nine. And Mounts having some kind of game with 21. He and Bothwell have both put up 21. Rojas fouled on the way to the basket. And that'll be number five on Mounts. His night is over. That's a heady play. You talk about basketball IQs all the time. Now, that was a huge turn of events that time, right? Number one, Mounts, his emotions were already running high. He had just knocked down a three-point shot, so his energy was high. His emotions were running high. But give credit to Rojas. One of the best ways to defend an offensive player who's hot is to put him in foul trouble. In this case, he was able to foul Clay Mounts out of the basketball game. 8-11 to go. Heady play by Rojas. He knew immediately when there was contact. That, that was number five on Mounts. And that's tough, Dave. As a, as a player, you know, when you've got a couple of fouls in the first half and you immediately get in the game, you focus on it. Or when you've got three or four fouls in the second half. But as the game goes on and you start to get more aggressive, it's hard to just keep that on your mind at all times. Well, Mounts will finish up with 21 points. The fourth time this year he's gone up over 20 points. And James Rojas is bringing it tonight. Alabama down eight. We are under eight minutes to go. Coleman Coliseum in Tuscaloosa. This one's going to come down to the wire. Points in that two and a half minute, three minute span that he was on the floor. So. You did get some value out of it, right? But still, long way to go without a guy that's been around your program for a long time, the senior out of Elkin, North Carolina. Yeah, Mount Airy High School. And, you know, Dave, he scored 18 points in the second half of the Cincinnati game. So when you look at these next seven minutes and 55 seconds left, for Coach Richie, the question is, who's going to step up and replace those points, those rebounds, uh, to try to help the Paladins close out a game here on the road? Well, tough shot as the shot clock winds down. They'll say that shot clock violation in Alabama. Again, that's the second time this half we've, we've heard the shot clock horn sound against the Paladins. Well, listen, the, the Southeastern Conference is known for defense. I, I read a note the other day, and I forgot how many SEC players have made all defensive teams now in the NBA. Uh, Jimmy Dice talked about it in the previous game as E. Ponds being one of the best defenders in America. I think you got to look at Herb Jones as one of those guys as well as Rojas now taking this game over. 
eight points, all of them coming here in the second half. They've cut the lead to six again. And again, if you are just joining us, Furman led by as many as 16 in the first half. Alabama has never led in this game. The last time we were tied, it was two to two. Well, and eventually uh, that turns into game pressure. And in this game, uh, obviously Furman's picked to win the Southern Conference by the media. UNC Greensboro was picked by the coaches. But being the SEC school, I would have to say that the game pressure goes to Alabama. They haven't led. They've been at home. They got punched first. And they've been trying to get over that hump. So the sooner they can get over that hump, the better for the Tide. The longer they can keep the separation, the better for Furman and the power. It's down to five as Herbert Jones adds to his 14 points. He now has 16 on six of 14 from the floor. He's got a double-double at 16 and 10. Long rebound right into the hands of Shackelford. Jaden to the basket. That won't go. Alabama with another chance. Shackelford, no. Tapped around. Rojas lost it. Still available. It'll belong to the Paladins. Dave, what I'm seeing, what I'm seeing now is desperation. Uh, but it's the wrong type of desperation by Alabama. Right now, you're looking at an Alabama team that wants to trim this five-point lead down in one play. That's why you saw Shackelford try to go one and one. And it's almost like he rushed the three-point shot. And then Rojas, you have to balance that aggressiveness with make sure you maintain your poise and your patience as well. Shackelford struggling, struggling offensively tonight. Seven points, just one of six from the field. He had 25 against this Furman team last year in Coleman Coliseum. Curley throws it away. There's Shackelford slashing to the basket and lays it up and in. It's down to three. And it comes off of the live ball turnover. I love this timeout by Coach Ritchie. Here come the Crimson Tide. Down 10 at halftime. 16 in the first half. Very conference, the Southeastern Conference. That's my guy. How about Always half of throw them? me those lobs. It's impressive. I need to thank Craig Pinkerton of the SEC office for Woo! sending me that nugget. Right? I, I couldn't take it on myself. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's sitting over there going, how do you come up with that? Well, for, for Mr. Pinkerton. You're like, I read the SEC News and Notes, man. <laughs> <laughs> See what Furman does here. Shot clock again down under five. Open Woo! three. Conversion, Alex Hunter. Beautiful offense that time. That's how you, that's called execution under pressure. That was Hunter's first field goal of the game. This isn't bad defense by Alabama. You see Shackelford's down in the stance. Now, you do get two men on the ball. Once you had two men on the ball in John Petty and Shackelford, that causes the rotation. Petty elevates, left it short. Just hadn't been there for him tonight. I've been in no shoes, Dave Neal. No. And I kept shoes. <laughs> right. There's a block. I think Jones got that one. He'll try again. He'll kick it back out. Here goes Hunter again off the back of the rim. And they'll say a foul against Alabama. I think that's Primo. A little push in the back. No, I think they got Gurley. Gurley with the, with push, the push in the back. Uh, a nice job by Petty fighting for, on the glass. And at times... And Alabama has Western Kentucky next with Hollingsworth and Charles Bassett. That will not be an easy game. But at times, because you have a mobile 
point forward like Herbert Jones, uh, Alabama struggles to close out their defensive trips with rebounds. And so because they are mobile and, and a little bit lighter, they have to gain rebound uh, in order to not allow themselves to be vulnerable for offensive rebound versus their opponents. Marty Smith, Ryan McGee, they have some fun and talk everything that is the SEC coming your way tomorrow at 11 p.m. Eastern, 10 Central, right here on the SEC Network. And, of course, you can always watch the boys on the ESPN app. Alabama gets one out of two at the line. They cut it to five, 437 and counting. These two teams played a good one last year. Alabama beat Furman 81-73. And now the lay-in by Shackelford cuts it to three. John Petty got a Christmas gift early and knew exactly what to do with it and allows the momentum to swing back to the tide a little bit here. A one-possession game. Herbert Jones gets it to Petty. Primo, there's Jones, offensive rebound. The tap will go, and Alabama has cut this to one. Winning plays. Now, if you're firming right now, your offensive execution has never been more important. You don't have to make a shot here, but you want to make sure you get a good look and attack the offensive glass. Foul on the floor. Bruner's tip, though, has cut this to one. How bad do you want it? The Crimson Tide, they heard us calling. Bruner on the glass for the rebound. Petty, but they have gotten all they could want out of Herbert Jones tonight. 16 points, 11 rebounds, a couple of assists. Now, Petty has done some other things because he's got five rebounds, five assists. Go for six from behind the arc. Well, and that's remember, Dave, Neil, since you gave credit to Pinkerton, I'll give credit as well. My dad's watching the game and just texted me. He, he said we should also mention the fact that since Mounts has went out of the basketball game, that that made a huge difference. And I think that's spot on. When you think about a senior, a veteran leader, and you see the look of his face right now, getting that fifth foul on him completely changed the momentum, and you can tell that they missed him going down the stretch here. Yeah, it is a tough, tough task to watch this one if you're a senior. He finished with 21 points. He picked up four fouls with 17 and a half minutes to go in the second half. Coach Ritchie put him back in about the 11 to 20 mark, and he played three and a half minutes and fouled out. Jackalford lost the handle. Paladin's back the other way. Here's Bobwell. Clock at 10. Alabama had it for a moment and lost it. Timeout taken by the Paladins with 2.48 to play, up by three. Five seconds on the shot clock. Well, just moments ago, there's a new record holder for women's basketball in terms of career victories as Tara Vanderveer just won at Stanford. Pure day with five seconds left to go. Watch the offensive glass. Both teams should know that the shot's going up, so it's critical for Furman that you crash the glass, and it's critical for Alabama that if you can get a stop, that you complete this defensive possession with the defensive rebound. Let's see where they go with this basketball. Not a lot of time to think about it. Well, Bothwell's getting this ball. I would, I would <laughs> imagine he would get the basketball and it'd be something with him, him or Gurley. Here's Bothwell, throws it up, and that'll be a shot clock violation. Tried to draw the foul, didn't work. I, I like the fact that the officials, the veteran officiating crew, did not call that foul, did not bail him out. Rojas did expose himself a little bit, but I did not think it was a foul. 
That is the fourth second half shot clock violation in the Paladins 11th turnover of the game. Off the front of the rim from Jordan Bruner. Here's Rojas. He has been everywhere tonight in this second half. Keeps it alive. Petty throws it up and it goes in. <laughs> Took the lid off of the rim for John Petty, but the key was the loose ball 50-50 ball so critical Throughout college basketball and that 50-50 ball could determine the outcome of this basketball game Two minutes to play in a one-point game Othwell Too strong offensive rebound to Slauson they're going to say a foul underneath, a little push on that rebound. This is what I'm talking about, Dave Neal. Let's look at the jerseys. You've got two, three black jerseys. Look at the white jerseys, like a, like a fumble almost. But John Petty comes up with the loose ball. And you know what, Dave, as a player, it's almost like he didn't have time to think about his struggles. He just caught the ball and went up with it, which is probably one of the reasons why he was able to knock it down. Rojas has been a critical component to Alabama's success in the second half as they have outscored Furman by nine here in the second 20 minutes. Eight points, seven. The game of basketball, extra possessions are so critical to victories. And right now it's the only thing that's really kept Alabama in this basketball game because they have struggled 30% from the three-point line. So Petty, 75% foul shooter on the year. Converts the front end, and we are tied for the first time since it was 2-2. Two to two. Well, this next possession for Furman, they're all important, but this one is critical because you now respond to the game pressure that Alabama has now applied to you. Furman, 0 for the last five from the field. They haven't had a field goal in four minutes. Hunter spins out of trouble. With five on the shot clock off the front of the rim. Here's Herbert Jones. Jones. Rojas got it, and Alabama has their first lead of the game with 110 <laughs> to play. Limited capacity, but the people who are there in Coleman Coliseum just erupted. It's been a long, hard road for them to get over this mountain of a deficit that they had. 79-76. Here's Hunter. Early to Bothwell. He has been locked up for the most part of the second half. Slauson. The catch and fire. Off the back of the rim, tapped around, rebound to Petty. Furman doesn't have to foul right now. It's still a one-possession basketball game. <laughs> He's a winner. Alabama's lead is now five as Jones gets the layup to go and then a blocking foul on the other end. That'll go against the Crimson Tide. And Herbert Jones, you said, when he plays, it's what he does. Absolutely, and he's done it in so many ways. Look at him, he changes position to try to make sure that he's in control versus allowing Furman to be in control, and then he jumps into the body of Gurley on that particular play as well. Very high basketball IQ to be able to slow down in front of Lawson and then speed up and jump into Gurley. Shackleford picked up that foul. That's his third. Last year, this game. Alabama's going to have to win this with defense now. 
Well, right now, for Furman, obviously, you have a chance to knock down a couple of free throws. It's very important if you're Alabama that you make sure you box out if there's a miss. But for Furman, 27.4 seconds is an eternity in the game of basketball. And so after you knock down these free throws, and you can see Mike Bonwell hasn't taken any free throws tonight, uh, after you knock down these free throws, then you're just looking for a steal. You try to see if you can get a 10-second call or a steal in the backcourt. If you do not get that, you have to foul immediately. Bothwell, excellent to line, 84% coming in. He's now 22 out of 26 on the year. The team's leading score, averaging almost 18 a game, now has 23. There's some pressure. Alabama beats it. Beautiful. That'll be an easy lay-in for Shackelford. Whatever you have, you have to have it quick and you have to be efficient here. There goes Herbert Jones again. Another block shot. Herbert Jones. A little bit of everything tonight. 18 points, a dozen rebounds, a couple of blocks, four assists. I think it's important that for fans who watched Alabama last year and may not have won all the games that Alabama wanted to win, you can tell that Coach Nate Oates uh, is moving this program in the right direction. And you can also tell the value that Herbert Jones, who was out for so many games last year, the value that he brings to the table. This Alabama team stubbed their toe against Stanford, uh, didn't play their best game. Williams, who is definitely a lottery pick in my opinion, had a beautiful game uh, for Stanford. But then to come back and knock off UNLV and then be able to beat Providence as well uh, is a pretty impressive win. Bothwell. Pull up three. Long rebound. Hunter throws it up and in. Herman without any timeouts. Need to make one of these to seal the deal tonight here in Tuscaloosa with 2.2 seconds remaining. And Alabama is going to find a way to win this one when it didn't look good for 80, 90% of this game, right? I mean, Furman completely outplayed him on the offensive end. Nate Oates shaking his head. Hey, what? Well, Remember this, Fish, that Furman shot over 60% in the... Well, and right now, this game isn't over yet. 2.2 seconds. That's enough time to get a rebound and maybe a pass, at least a dribble, and be able to shoot a shot the length of the court. Shackleford, 77% free throw shooter on the year. Missed it. One last chance. Bothwell... That shot won't count. Blocked in the backcourt, and Alabama hangs on to win when it looked so bleak tonight. Furman gave them all they wanted, but in the end, Herbert Jones making those winning plays that you talk about, and you get some exceptional work off the bench for the Crimson Tide. Rojas with 11, Gary with 10. And when things look bad for Alabama, those two brought the energy.